Hello everybody, Kurt Risch here and thanks for joining me on One Shepherd. So today we are continuing with our New Testament reading of the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven, if indeed Having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the thing done in the body, according to what he has done whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on your behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God, or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them, as has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteous of God in him. We do have a word study here, guys. The word is righteousness of God. The Greek is diakosune theo. Strong's Concordance number 1343 and 2316. The righteousness of God is a righteousness that comes from God. It is God's way of making a sinner right or just before him. Luther defined the righteousness of God as righteousness valid before God, which a man may possess through faith. Luther said that this righteousness is the first and the last need of any sinful individual. The word righteousness in Paul's letter to the Romans carries a double sense and may be labeled both legal and moral. In other words, the word refers to the legal action God takes in declaring believers righteous but it also refers to the perfect righteousness, a characteristic that can only be attributed to God himself in Scripture and is the lofty standard for human behavior. This lofty standard cannot be achieved by anyone's effort, so God has to act to bring his people into a right relationship with himself. Guys, that's it for our New Testament reading of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe below. May you have a great day and God bless.